Do you know that there are seven things that God hates? The book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom versus foolishness. And even though the book of Proverbs is a book uh, that helps us to deal with daily living, uh, it bases all of its wisdom on the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 26 and 23 tells us, Fervent lips with a wicked heart are like earthenware covered with silver dross. He who hates disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within himself. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. And it goes on, verse 26, Though his hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. And if we go back in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16, we'll hear what those abominations are. These six things that the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. And so there you have it. These are the seven things that God hates. And you know, you would say, well, Pastor, I didn't know God could hate anything because I thought God was love all around. Yeah, yes, He is. He is love in everything. He's love abounding. But there are also some things that God hates. So here are the seven things that God hates. Number one, God hates haughty eyes. Haughtiness implies lifting or exalting oneself up, pride, arrogance, or even being consumed with self. Now notice I did not say self-confidence because many times we um, can misinterpret self-confidence with being haughty. Many people are just very, very confident in who they are, their abilities, uh, what they can do, uh, what they say. You know, they just have that self-confidence because sometimes they're raised that way. Um, they've gone through that place where they say to themselves, especially if they're believers, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. They might have fought the lion and the bear like David. And so now their confidence level is way up. Why? Because they've been tested. So we should not look at a person that is self-confident, right? Confident and say, oh, they're just being so haughty. Uh, it's not always haughtiness all the time. Like I said, haughtiness is when we lift up ourselves in pride, arrogance, uh, consumed with self, me, 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 me. Look at me, look at me. Think about Nebuchadnezzar. You remember King Nebuchadnezzar? Daniel 4, 28 where he looked at all that he had. And you know what he said? He said, guess what? I built this, me, I did it. And what did God do? God gave him the mind of a beast. And that's right. Uh, when we go beyond our abilities and we claim it and say, this is us, then we are in that place of haughtiness. And guess what, folks? Humility is the opposite of haughtiness. And when we are humble, when we are humble, we think about others. We also thank God for all of his provisions. Why? Because we realize it is not us. We didn't do it by ourselves, but it's because of the hand of the, of the Lord on our lives that we have, have provisions. We have food. We have been fed. Yes, we go out, we do the work, we do all of that, but it's His breath, it's His strength, right? It's His breath in our lungs that we can just pour out and give Him that praise. And so humility is the opposite of haughtiness. And as believers, we must continue to be humble so that we can resist that pridefulness and not be haughty. And so God hates haughty eyes. Uh, those people, those eyes that look down on everyone else, those eyes that look down on everyone else and refuses to look up at God. God does not like it. So here's number two. God hates a lying tongue. 
That's right. God hates a lying tongue. And you know what? It makes sense that God would hate a lying tongue. Why? Because Satan is said to be the father of lies. And so why should God like lying if Satan is the father of lies? John 8 and 44 tells us, You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. Oh my, my, my. For he is a liar and the father of it. And so Satan is a liar. The Bible says in John 8 and 44 that he is the father of lies. And so God does not like lying at all. Lying may seem like a trivial sin. Um, and sometimes we say, oh, but it's not like murder. Oh, it's not like, you know, adultery or fornication or stealing, right? It's only a little white lie. It's only a little white lie, but God hates lying. And so my friends, if you can, and sometimes people are, are, have a problem with it, and they say, oh, but I've been doing that. I can't get out of it. I'm always telling a lie. Uh, lying is not good. And God does not like it. As a matter of fact, lying, and here's a nugget. I love to give nuggets and you can write this one down. It's on the screen. Lying makes love impossible. Truth difficult to find and relationships hard to be sustained. Lying makes love impossible, truth difficult to find, and relationships hard to sustain. Uh, so there we have it. Lying is not good. Lying breaches trust. Lying makes you an island, and you are surrounded by the sharks of your lie. Oh my goodness, that's, that's a good one. Lying makes you an island and you are surrounded by the sharks of the lies that you've told. Um, and you can't come off that island because you are now a prisoner of the lies that you have told. Why? Because every lie you speak, you now must uh, fortify it and you must protect it. And so the more lies you tell, they fortify you, they, they surround you, and you become a prisoner to it because you don't know the last one you said. You don't know who you said it to. And so now you are protected, you are surrounded, you are imprisoned by the lies that you have told. And guess what? God does not like a lying tongue. And here's number three. God hates hands that shared innocent blood. God hates hands that shared innocent blood. God hates unjust wars. God hates murder, right? God hates those that... Uh, shared innocent blood you know we have uh, in this world that we are living in today we have all kinds of unjust wars going on within countries countries against other countries um, and we have so much murder in in the towns and countries caribbean all over the world there's just so much murder and god hates it god doesn't like it as a matter of fact uh, God would want us to intervene, especially when it comes down to protecting the innocent. Children, uh, adults and children that are low functioning, um, seniors that cannot protect themselves. God wants us to be protectors for those that cannot protect themselves. And you may say, well, Pastor, I don't want to get involved in certain things. Um, you don't have to be directly involved right you can pick up the phone and call those uh, tipsters and those hotlines and uh, make an anonymous uh, complaint right because god wants us to not allow things to happen especially to children especially to children god doesn't want us to just see it and it happens and we say nothing about it seniors right those that can't help themselves and you see them and God does not want us to see these things happening and we not say anything. We must protect those that are innocent and that cannot help themselves. And here's number four. 
God hates a heart that devises evil plans. And you know, there's one thing uh, when we do evil, but God hates it when we devise it, the heart that actually schemes on it, the, the heart that goes to work and says, this is how we are going to rob. This is how we are going to maim. This is how we are going to kill. That's a heart that devises wicked plans. And the Bible says that God hates it. God hates it. And this is something that we should never do. If you find yourself thinking and devising evil, repent. Go to God and say, Father, this is not your best for me. Um, this is not what you would have for me to be. I repent. Father, take my mind, control my mind with the Word of God. God is not going to control your mind and say, oh, I'm a zombie. No, but you can uh, resist the devil and he will flee. Read the Word of God. Pray. Allow your mind to be washed. That's, that's how it becomes um, in control and under the kingdom's influence. Allow your mind to be washed. Resist the devil when those plans and those evil schemes come to mind resist the devil you see god wants our thought life uh, to be one of honoring him of bringing peace to situations we should be wearing the armor of god and one of those pieces of the armor says that our feet are shored with the preparation of the gospel of peace and so when we walk into a room, we should be bringing peace, 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 not destruction, not people saying, oh my goodness, look who is here. Terror is here. Um, no, no, no. But we, when we walk in, it should be peace. We should bring that peace. Why? Because number four says that God hates the heart that devises evil plans. Here's number five. God hates feet that run rapidly to evil. God hates feet that run rapidly to evil. As believers, we have the capacity in Christ to choose the way of escape that he brings us. But when we find ourselves not choosing to get out of a situation, but now we're running towards the evil, now we're running to be the one that is actually creating the problem, this is something that God definitely hates. God hates feet that run rapidly to evil. Um, you know, we've seen so many times uh, where persons are, are in a fight um, and you find other people running towards it, um, throwing their own blows and uh, throwing bottles and all these different things. Um, but God doesn't like that. God expects us, I'm talking to the believers today, God expects us to run away from evil. Uh, he will make a way of escape for us and he expects us to take it. Take door number one. <laughs> he expects us to run through door number one and escape the evil plans and the snares of the enemy. If there's any fighting to do, it should be us fighting against the host of hell. Not against our brothers and our sisters, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Here is what 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 tells us. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Somebody say faithful. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And so God will always make a way of escape for the believer. And you may say, well, pastor, I've been through it. God did not make a way of escape. You probably weren't listening. You probably weren't watching, uh, but God will always make a way of escape for us. Even if we feel as though I have gone too far. There's no coming back for me. Um, don't believe that. God will always make a way of escape for you. Number six, God hates a false witness that utters lies. 
God hates a false witness that utters lies. And we said earlier that God hates lying. Um, and lying can become a lifestyle that spins out of control. And a liar can be now one that just constantly, constantly is evolving their lies, you know. Um, and now a liar is now someone that bears false witness. Um, a liar is now someone who someone else can turn to and say, didn't you see that happen? And they say, oh, yes, I did. And they just went on. They go on and on um, in a lie. Right. And so God hates false witnesses um, that tells and spins lies. Amen. This is something that God does not stand for, you know, especially as believers. Like I said, I'm speaking to the believers today. Do not be a false witness. If you didn't see it, don't say you saw it, right? To help out a brother, <laughs> help out a sister. No, sir, don't do it because this is something that God does not stand for. When we bear false witness, uh, this is when we defame someone's character. Uh, this is when we, we start to crush someone's reputation. And this is something that God does not stand for. It's a great evil in the sight of the Lord. If we're going to testify of anything, people of God, we should be testifying of the goodness of God, right? Of the goodness of the Lord in your life. And number seven, God hates those that spread strife among the brothers and the sisters. God hates those that spread strife among the brothers and the sisters. And you know what? The reality is um, hatred and division can be in households, right? Family households, as well as in the church. All it takes is one person to be divisive, to be in there and just spreading strife. And we call it gossip, isn't it? We call it gossip. And sometimes we hear people say, um, oh, um, I just brought this so that we can pray. No, no, no. You brought it because you want to gossip about it. You want to spread division. You want to spread strife. Um, and this is something that God hates. As a matter of fact, God even hates gossiping. Did you know that? Did you know that? God hates gossiping. And so he doesn't want us spreading division and spreading strife within our brothers and sisters. We can spread strife by picking fights, by lying, by bringing temptations, by teasing, right? Or just being a very, very difficult person and having a, an extremely bad attitude. And you know what? Some people prefer confrontation. Some people prefer combat than peace. Um, but this is something that God uh, frowns upon. Even as a believer, uh, we should be uh, vessels of peace rather than vessels of confrontation and combat. Amen. There's a time and a place for everything, right? But our, our natural, the natural thing for us as believers to do should be to bring peace. God doesn't like um, hearts that bring strife um, and spread strife among the brethren. And if you don't believe me, here is what Romans 12 and 18 says about this particular number seven. Here's what it says. Romans 12 and 18. It says, If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Let me read that again. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men and folks you know there are some things that are impossible to do and sometimes it's to live peaceably with someone you may be reaching out olive branch after olive branch and you know uh, i'm sorry I'm, I'm you're doing everything and they just say i don't want to have peace we will never have peace, right? Sometimes it happens. Um, I will never forgive you. Can you imagine an adult saying that? They must have been hurt very deeply for a person to say, I refuse to let go of this hurt because even though you're coming and saying, you apologize, you this, you that, I'm sorry, 
what can I you, and they're saying listen I need to hold on to this because you hurt me that bad I can't give you the satisfaction of knowing that I forgave you um, and it's, it is to their spiritual detriment that they do this knowing that you know how can you say you love God who you cannot see but you can't love the person that's right in front of you and you want God to forgive you but you can't forgive your brother or your sister the Bible says we should leave our gift and go and be reconciled to our brother or our sister and so sometimes it's beyond you um, and this is why the Bible says as much as it depends on you some things is beyond you it does not depend on you you must walk away right you must just walk away and say Lord I tried I just I tried I tried <laughs> right um, and then there are other things that it depends on you it is you that will bring the peace and so you must be that peace agent when it depends on you and you know sometimes we are like on our journey um, you know there are seven things that God hates and you know you're fulfilling like five or six of them uh, but there should be a decreasing level of foolishness in our lives right there should be a decreasing level of sinfulness in our lives when we give our hearts to the Lord and when we are on that quest to know him better how do we do that reading the Word of God uh, meditating on the Word of God studying the Word of God praying the Word of God right and so we should be praying constantly um, we should be in the Word of God um, we should be studying why because we need the level of sin and the level of foolishness in our lives to decrease and then we want the Holy Spirit to bring wisdom to our lives and so now the wisdom level in our lives increases the more we stay close to God stay close to his Holy Spirit wisdom increases the more we read the Word of God the more we pray wisdom increases and so it's very very important that we as believers understand that sin and foolishness decreases in our lives if you are at a standstill with sin and foolishness it's not going down it's not going up you know you need to pray a little harder you need to fast some more and you need to ask the Lord to root up all of these things that are laying dormant on the inside of you that mean you no good amen and here's what Proverbs 4 and 18 tells us this is beautiful and I want to leave you with this as we leave today this is something that will encourage you I guarantee it hey bet Proverbs 4 and 18 says the path of the just is like the shining Sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day and so God has a beautiful plan a beautiful path for your life and he wants you to shine and when the Sun is coming up if you ever see the Sun coming up in the morning time it just comes up it shines bright and brighter and brighter right um, and this is how God wants you to shine he wants your life to be bright and shine ever brighter unto a perfect day I want you to touch someone right now I want you to write this note down and say I am on my way to my perfect day come on say it together I am on my way to my perfect day why because God has promised it he has it waiting for you and you've just got to live that life that will be pleasing to him get rid of the foolishness foolishness decrease Spirit of God and wisdom increase in my life because God has a brighter day waiting for me a brighter day is on the way God bless you